Today we begin the build series of my 2003 Nissan GU Patrol and we're kicking it off with a full roof rack and accessories installation and setup. Proudly supported by Outback Equipment and in part by. Now as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, I do have a little bit of a history with roof racks. So I'm going to divide this video into two sections. The second section of it will be the full installation and have a look at the roof rack setup and all the things I've got for it. But before we jump into that, I thought I'd sit down and run through some things about roof racks and the roof racks for the patrol in regards to cost, load ratings, and why get a roof rack. Because it is all very important information to know and be aware of when you are buying a roof rack. And so you don't end up like me 12 months ago. First question I'm gonna cover is why get a roof rack? What's the purpose? Well, if you have a look at the patrol, it currently has nothing on the roof. So I have no option of setting up or installing anything on there whatsoever. And for me, that's gonna be very valuable space up on the roof to store things when we are going four wheel driving and camping. I'll be putting a 270 degree awning on there, which will give us full sun and rain weather protection around the car. I'll be putting my swags up there, which are light and bulky, but they just take up so much room in the car. I just don't have room to put a couple of swags like on the back seats or in the boot. It'll also give me space to mount some camp lights on either side, some recovery tracks, some water, some fuel, quite a few different bits and pieces. The next thing I'm gonna cover will be load ratings, which will take a few minutes. I'll try and explain it as best and as simply as I can without making it confusing, but it definitely is important information that you really need to know when purchasing and installing a roof rack. The first thing you need to know is what is the load rating of your roof, of your four wheel drive that the manufacturer has specified and this is often easier said than done which I've worked out with this patrol is nearly impossible to get an accurate answer for that the first place I looked was the own owner's manual and it only gives a roof load rating for the Nissan factory bars which it gives a rating of hundred kilos but that doesn't help me when I'm fitting an aftermarket roof rack now I've scoured the internet and every single forum possible and I just get varying answers. The most common answer seems to be 100 or 150 kilos, 150 kilos, but I've seen answers go up to 200 kilos. Now I rang Nissan and they couldn't give me an official answer. The best answer they could give me was to go off the manufacturer's book, which is that 100 kilos for those two roof bars. But I'm not getting the two Nissan roof rack bars on the patrol, so it doesn't really help me. When searching the internet, I came across some info that's written up by Pat Callingham, is it? Pat Callingham, the full drive presenter in Australia, whatever you want to call him. He has a video on YouTube that clearly states the roof load rating of the Nissan Patrol is 100 kilos. But then on his website, he, he has an article which clearly states the roof load rating of the Nissan Patrol is 150 kilos. So it still leaves me confused and no idea the answer. What I did end up finding was the installation instruction booklet for Nissan's three bar system. And that gives a load rating of 120 kilos. Now, they don't really specify whether that is on top of the bars or if you have to minus the weight of the bars off that 120 kilos. As you can see, it starts to get very confusing. If anyone can give me an official answer, that would be amazing. I've asked around and people are telling me, yeah, 150 kilos, 150 kilos, 150 kilos. I'm like, yeah, cool. Like, that's good, but can you actually show me documentation that says that? And no one has been able to present that to me yet. As I said, the highest rating documentation I can get is 120 kilo load rating for this roof rack. Common sense would tell you that it is going to be higher than that because the two bar system is 100 kilos, which has four points of contact on your roof. Now the three bar system is 120 kilos, which has six points of contact on your roof. Now the roof rack I've got today is a big wide platform that has eight points of contact so common sense and logic would say to me, we're talking 140, maybe 150 kilos. But if there's an accident, warranty, insurance, unfortunately common sense is not going to hold up. So legally, 
the highest I can bring it to is 120 kilo load rating the Nissan Patrol GU roof rack has. Of course, there's people on the internet who says, yeah, I went across the desert with 200 kilos on it, 250 kilos on it, and yeah, they probably would be fine. But it's just, it's outside the legal parameters that I can find. Uh, that's all I'm saying. If you want to go over, well then, you know, that's obviously up to you. Now, there is an important bit of information to be aware of with these ratings I'm talking about. With these ratings, I'm referring to dynamic load rating, which refers to when the four wheel drive is on the road or moving. Because where people get confused is they think, well, I've put a rooftop tent up on there and then I'm gonna have two people sleeping in it. There's like 250 kilos, which is well over my 120 kilo limit. But it is not actually because roof racks also have a static load rating, which refers to when the vehicle is stationary or not moving. Once again, I cannot get an official rating for this car, but you're generally looking at about two to two and a half times your dynamic load, which puts the static load rating of this roof when the vehicle is not moving at 250 to 300 ish kilos. That's the best answer I can come up with. So be very clear on your two types there, your dynamic and your static, because they're, they're different. Now our next point comes into off-road versus on-road rating. Some manufacturers do have a off-road and on-road on -road rating for their roof racks or their roof bars, but this is not all of them. So companies that do have a on-road and off-road rating, generally the off-road rating is to divide your on-road rating by 1.5, which will bring it down a decent amount. So you do have to be wary of that depending on what you, you are wanting to put on your roof. Now, most manufacturers do not decrease their roof load rating when going off-road. It is only the actual roof rack companies themselves that do that. And this brings me into my next point of why I got a front runner roof rack for the Patrol. There's a few different reasons. One, I ran one on the nav and absolutely loved it. Strongly mounted, strongly built heaps of accessories for them and no issues with it at all. It has a high load rating which will allow me to make use of all of my roof rack capacity if I need to. So the Front Runner Slimline Roof Rack 2 I think it is, which is the one I got, has a dynamic moving vehicle load rating of 150 kilos. But you do have to remember just because Front Runner says that's 150 kilos, if your manufacturer says like say you own a Hilux, your roof rack is only 75 kilos. Just, you can't then put 150 kilos on. You have to go with the lower one, whichever one is lower. So if the manufacturer gives a lower one, you can't actually go higher than that. I hope this is making sense to everyone. Um, and that was one of the main reasons I went with Front Runner, because they don't have a off and on road load rating like some other brands. I have confirmed this with them directly. They said the 150 kilos is the one rating, whether you're off-road or on-road, that does not change. So legally, warranties, insurances, I know that if anything happens, as long as I'm under that 150 kilos from front runner and under my 120 kilos from the manufacturer, I'm safe. Now, I spent a few minutes talking about trying to get the maximum load that I can get on my roof, and people are probably thinking, geez, mate, hold up, you don't need 150 kilos on your roof rack, you'll topple your car over. And yes, just because I've worked out I can put that high amount up, up on there, I just want to know that to begin with. So if the situation ever comes across where I need to put some extra things on my roof, even say like I've gone down to Bunnings and I had to buy whatever for the house or something and I've loaded up my roof rack, I know what I can legally and safely do, but yes, I'm not gonna just automatically put 120 kilos on my roof each time I go four-wheel driving. Like of all four-wheel drives, you wanna keep your center of gravity low, and putting a massive amount on your roof does not aid that. The last key point I wanna make before I bore everyone to death here, there's so much info to go through of this, but we'll be here a week. But the last main point is to remember that you need to minus the weight of the rack itself off your roof load rating. So say we're going with the 120 kilos that I can legally safely put on my Nissan GU Patrol. Once I put my roof rack on there, which I need to actually weigh or get the statistic of that, it's gonna be around 25 to 30 kilos. I need to minus that off your 120 kilos and that's what else you can put on top. I can't put 
120 kilos on top of the roof rack itself. So just be clear about that because that is what catches a few people out. One other thing I want to say before I start unboxing is this build series of the Patrol in general. It's not necessarily in order of what I would recommend doing modifications to four wheel drives. It's just very hard to get parts at the moment. I've got a lot of things on order and I'm basically just going to be doing them as they turn up. But in saying that, the roof rack was always one of the first things I was going to do anyway because we need a place to put the swags, the recovery tracks and an awning. Because we we're going to go camping last weekend but it was raining the whole weekend and we we're like, well, we won't take the patrol because there's no awning and you know where we're going to sit in the rain we're just going to sit in the car or sit in the swags as you can see i've got quite a few boxes here that's the roof rack and all the accessories but we'll start unboxing them and having a look at how we're going to put this thing together and get it up on the roof this is probably not the recommended technique for moving boxes but a little bit of weight in that one i'm going to assume that this is the actual rack itself so i'm going to open up this one first Guys. Here's our instruction sheet. It's a slimline two front runner roof rack platform, full length one for the full length of the patrol. The good thing about these wagons is they're nice and big so you can fit a nice big strong roof rack on it. And it doesn't have any sides, the front or back's not like a cage, it's just a flat slated one. I like the flat ones because they give you the most versatility. I'm not planning on putting a rooftop tent on this thing, but if I do one day, I know it can easily just uh, go on there without having to get rid of the sides and stuff like that and should you need a little bit of overlap or something for a big bulky item you know it's there available for you make sure we get everything out of this box and don't lose anything along the way we're just going to basically have a whole heap of slats and you're out of assembly part and we're just going to have to bolt it all together i assume and then get it up on the roof laid it all out we got something that resembles a roof rack and now read the instructions and work out how to start bolting it all together first thing we got to do is assemble our side components that will run down the side length of the rack never done this before I am in no way qualified to do this at all it's basically an idiot tries to put together roof rack but gonna give it a go anyway rather than paying a shop to do it We've got both our sides together. Just got to tighten these nuts up now with the Allen key. If anyone wants to tell me anything I'm doing wrong, though it's probably too late because the roof rack's already going to be on the car by the time you see this video. Okay, let's see what's next. Next step is to make sure there's a nylon locking nut in each single slate, which it looks like there is. Looks like I turn everything upside down and basically bolt this whole thing together and then we'll flip it back over. Line all these up to make sure we got the spacing right and then we start folding all our slats in. We'll just do them all by a hand tight finger until we get both sides and then we'll go around and tighten them all up otherwise you'll be trying to fully tighten them while they're a bit crooked and on a slam. Yes, got it. Ah, now we bolt these ones in. Now we go around and tighten all our nuts up with an Allen key. Starting to come together. That's the rack mostly assembled there now. That's your main base. Tightened up all those side ones, put your four corner pieces in. And I think it's sort of ready to go. Now I've got to work out in one of these boxes is your mounting legs. So as I said earlier, it's mounted with eight legs. So we just had to, didn't really say the best way to space them out, but I looked at a couple of pictures of mates online. They seem to go right at either end, come in two, and then you'll have a three gap through the middle, it looks like. So you mount these down, the four on each side. So I've got Zach helping me now, who is Dad's apprentice. Um, but I needed someone else. He's helped me do this bit. I need someone to help me get it up on the roof. I can't really do that bit by myself. We're nearly there. We're just trying to sort out all our exact measurements and then we'll get it up on the roof. Yeah. 
so we reckon that we've got it on now we've sat it up in the channels and now you can just sit it there and then we get our mounting brackets and clamp it on and that's the good thing about a wagon like a patrol you don't have to drill in the roof like most modern utes and you know like my nav you have to drill into the roof this just clamps onto the gutter so it's gutted mounted with clamps meaning if you want to pull the whole thing off one day there's probably not going to be any damage or obviously no holes to fill up there may be a little bit of paint to fix up and traditionally gutter mounts are known to sort of be one of your strongest ways to mount roof racks which i'm happy about we've been walking around the car just getting it all centered and measured properly so we're bringing it back as far as we can because the gutters kind of roll down a bit at the front and then it'll want to bend itself over so we just sit it back a bit yeah i'm pretty happy with how this is all coming together i guess it should be all good and then as you can see it's basically just sat in the gutter and then you've got your other mounts that you sit on, which come in up from underneath, fold it together, and it uh, yeah, clamps your top and your bottom on and tightens it all up. Okay, it's getting there. I'm just going around making sure it's all good, and I just sent a video, I sent a video to my mate who actually fits these just to make sure I got it all right because I don't want any roof rack disasters, and obviously I've never actually done one before. The only thing is it seems to um bend a little bit so i've just checked for him but i'm thinking that i'm missing it's possibly meant to be a spacer for the front or rear to lift it up a little bit so it sits flat so i'm just gonna have to look into that i'm gonna leave for now because getting late in the day there's a storm coming in this wind's picking up and then tomorrow i'll come back to it have another look over it and then start fitting those accessories so we'll check back in in the morning all right, back again the next day to finish off this roof rack. Now, I had a look into it last night and I realized a couple of things I did wrong. Firstly, in the instruction yesterday, they didn't actually say where to mount the legs for it, but I had a look online, a different instruction set. And this one is meant to be back there. So I've got to move that. And having a look over it, I realized I didn't properly jam all of these. These have got to be pushed right in. So I've got to loosen them up, push them in. And the last thing is I spoke to Front Runner last night and they said in one of the other boxes somewhere, there should be like spaces to lift the front and rear up a little bit so that sits nice and flat the whole way through. So I've got to fix those three things up and then we can go into mounting the accessories. Looks like I did find them. It's got leg spaces on the back there. It's got to work out how these fit. Cut down one of the Allen keys so I could put in the drill and then unscrew and re-screw all these by drill rather than having to do it by hand again because it's a bit painful by hand. Just loosening off this one now and then we'll put that spacer in. Take these bolts out. The spacers come with slightly longer bolts to allow for that, so put them in and then your spacer goes there and then your bracket back on. Got that all together now, put our nuts and washers back on. And it'll just help push the roof rack up that 10 mil at the front and then we'll do the same in the rear and it should level the whole thing out a whole lot more. And then the other thing that we came up with, this was Dad's idea, was these brackets are like a steel or metal bracket and they go straight onto the steel metal roof. So we grabbed some old hose that we had laying around and cut it to length to sit in under that bracket there just to give it a little bit of cushion and save it just jamming straight into the metal. And then once you put your other bracket on that brings it all together, the green bit will hit, be hidden in behind there anyway so you won't see it. And it should just make that difference to help give a little bit of cushion, stop it squeezing the metal together so much, stop it like dinting or scratching it and therefore hopefully stopping any rust that would potentially occur there. I don't know, hopefully that's a good idea anyway. We'll see, see how it goes and we can change it if need be, but it just seemed to be the better thing to do. Anyways, that's the front two done. I just have to finish tightening them up and put the brackets back on. I'll go around and do the back two, move those back, tighten it back all up and hopefully it'll be all good. There it is, the roof rack's all on and mounted. Couple of mistakes yesterday afternoon on the initial attempt, but that's what happens, I guess, when you're first time doing it and when you're me, who's not the most mechanical-minded person, but I wanna try and do as much as I can 
sort of myself or be involved with it with help of, help of others with the build of this patrol. And there's how these clamp on. If you've got a mount, so you've got a cap and your back one onto your roof rack there and just clamps in on that gutter. And there's that bit of rubber hose we put in under there just to give it a bit of protection so it's not jamming in metal and metal. Now that I've got the roof rack fully assembled and sorted, I'm gonna start mounting up some of the accessories I got with it. The first one being the wind fairing, I think it's called, or the wind protector that goes on the front. Same one I have up on the nav. I personally just like the look of them, and they do help that little bit with the wind noise too up on your roof. There it is, I'll read these instructions and work out how to mount it up with these uh, bolts and plates. And it comes with a plastic like coating, plastic laminate sleeve, whatever you wanna call it, that goes on your roof rack where that rubber sits just as a bit of extra protection against your paint. First thing you gotta do is pull just both these corner mounts off which are just with an Allen key so then you can slide your brackets down in there. Next accessory I'm going to install with the roof rack is going to be one of these front runner roof rack tables. Now it's the same one I have on the nav, so some of you may have seen it before, but they're an awesome bit of kit. I love it. It's one of my favorite camping mods I did to the nav. And what it is, is a nice big stainless table. The only downfall is they do have a little bit of weight to them. I think they're just over 10 kilos, but heaps of room on it, unreal quality and it slides in up under the rack, so it's always there, you can just pull it out of camp whenever you need to use it. Got the mounting kit for it here, so just gotta work out where we're gonna put it, and then yeah, mount it up. Had to move down the shed, because that rain moved in, it's pouring rain now, so it is a little bit noisy, but I'll just try to speak up. Gonna mount the table at the back of the roof rack this time, because on the nav it's on the side, but the problem with this is the table doesn't fit between where the, the legs are, where it mounts in on the side. But you can mount them the other way down the back, and I figured that's a pretty good spot anyway, because it means open up these doors, pull out the table when you're doing stuff at the back here, and yeah, it works really well down there. So you got your two brackets, which you have to bolt in up underneath, and then that's where your table slides in and mounts on them, so I'm gonna do that now. So I got the two underneath brackets up in there. I didn't fully tighten them because then I kind of roughly put them where they need to go, which is 750 mil apart. Put the table in and then basically jam the brackets into it because you want to reduce any movement, otherwise it's going to rattle up here. So I've got them in super tight now and it's firmly secured. I'll tighten these nuts up. And then the last thing to do with this table is to mount your latch, which is just a nut down this channel. So. With the roof rack, all your slats and sides have channels that I think it's M8 nuts and bolts fit through, so you can pretty much set up anything you want using M8 bolts and nuts. So just put a nut down here, M8 bolt into it with the latch, and then this is what will clip the table on uh, at the end here to hold it in place. So you got it held in all around, so it's not going anywhere. And then when you want to use it, lift that clip up and then pull your table out. So there it is there, we just gotta make it roughly middle, tighten that up and we're good to go. I think maybe I have to put a strip of rubber in underneath to stop that bounce there at the end, but other than that, there's no forward or backward movement, no side to side movement, so I'll just check that last thing. Last thing is this rubber which I've just measured and I'll cut it off there. And then that will sit in the slot up underneath, so instead of the table sort of banging up and down at the end there, this rubber will fill in the gap and it'll just hit into the rubber so if it moves at all, so it won't really make any noise then. A little bit of a tight squeeze, but that's where you're putting it, squeezing that rubber in up underneath there. All right, there's that rubber along there. So, table slides on. I may need a stool, <laughs> carry a stool to do this once I put the bigger tires and lift and everything else on, but you probably stand on that uh, on the back step there, I guess. I table in, clip it up, 
You can put a lock through there as well so no one can take it, but once you want to get it off, lift that up, pull it out, out comes your table. Make sure you don't bump your roof on the way through. There it is. Can you see that on the camera? Awesome table for camp. That it's always stored up there and ready to go. I'm a mess here. I'm covered in sweat and rain and everything. Well, I'm exhausted. That was yesterday afternoon and most of today, but it's all on for the moment. First time ever doing one, but I'm glad I did it myself and didn't take it to the shop for them to do them. As I said, I want to try and do as much of this stuff that I can with this patrol build myself. I have no idea what I'm doing, so go easy on me, but yeah, stoked that I was able to do that myself with a little bit of help from Dad and Zach on the way to mount those things up. And I reckon it looks pretty cool. And as I said, pretty important necessity for me and doing early on in the build to put the swags up there, because I'm going to run swags with this. I'm not going to put a rooftop tent up there. Going to put recovery tracks, got the table up there, awning and other few bits and pieces. Now I do have a awning coming for it, but it's still two or three weeks away. I'm getting a, one of the new Drifter Stockton 270 degree awnings, which I'm super keen for. I never put one on the nav just because they're so big and bulky, I feel like for a shorter ute. Uh, roof rack and because I got the rooftop tent on there, but so I got the mounting brackets here to go with it, but I'm not going to put them on yet till I actually have the awning with me and I sort all that out. So that's still coming and I got four treads coming for it on their way as well. So once they come, I'll mount them up there too. Not fully complete, but most of the way and just got those couple of accessories to add on once they arrive. All right, we'll run through the cost of today's setup then I need to get out of this rain. I'm trying to stand out here in the sunlight still so you can actually see me. The cost of the full rack setup itself is $2,350. The table, they are expensive, but they are a bloody awesome table and they only work with a front runner rack. So I know a lot of people have just gone a front runner rack due to the fact that they can get that table accessory with it. They are $1,010. That includes everything you need for it, the table and the mounting kit, the nuts, bolts, all that. Same with the rack. The wind deflector to go on the front, $270 with everything you need for it. And the drifter awning which I have coming is $999. So the total ends up being $4,269 for that full setup once the awning's on it too. Actually, I didn't include the brackets. I don't have the price on them, but I think they're around $100. So add that $100 onto that total too. As you can see, it is quite a bit of money, an expensive setup to go on the roof, but it's all extremely good quality gear that you know is going to last a lifetime. And fortunately for me, I am in the position where I do get help with some of this gear, you know, obviously in return for producing the content that I do. But during this build series, I want to give everyone, you know, cost during each episode so you can sort of see how much all this gear does add up to. And then the other important thing to go over is the weight of this setup. Fully assembled, the rack itself, including all your mounting and legs, is 34 kilos. The full setup of the table, including all your mounting and that, is 15.2 kilos. The table itself is 11.82 kilos. The awning that I have coming is 16.8 kilos and I don't actually have a weight on that wind deflector on the front but it was very very light. The brackets had a little bit of weight to them so I'm just going to put two kilos there for that. Now adding up all our weights here, that brings it to a total of 68 kilos on the roof once I have the awning on there. So as you can see, your weight gets up there very very fast. If you're including like, that's everything on there including the rack itself. Now going back to the start of the episode, if we're looking at that max official legal load rating we can get of 120 kilos, that leaves us about 52 kilos working room there to put swags, the recovery tracks and anything else we want. Or if we're going to go on our sort of common sense estimate, which I think it would be is about 140 and 100 or 150 that leaves you up around still 80 kilos of working room you got there for your swags recovery tracks and all the bits and pieces as i said you still want to try and bring it down you don't want to just put on the max weight that you possibly can but yeah that's sort of the figures that i'll be looking at for this roof rack all right there we have it episode done hopefully you enjoyed let me know what you think of that first build series and sort of how you want me to put these together try and make them you know a combination of entertaining and informative it's absolutely bucketing down right now so you can probably hardly hear me i do apologize for that 
Let me know what mods you think I should do next. I do already have quite a few things coming because to me, the more I order and put on, the more content it's gonna be for me to put out, which is my job and hopefully entertainment for you guys as well. First trip away is gonna be this weekend. So it'll be basically a stock standard vehicle other than the roof rack setup we've done today. And then in between each trip, so we'll start adding more mods as we go. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Now I'm sure a lot of you are aware, I do have a little bit of a history with roof racks with my Now I'm sure a lot of you are aware, now I'm sure. Now I'm sure a lot of you are aware, I do have a little bit of a history with roof racks. So there's gonna be two parts to this video. The second part will, no not two parts, like. So I thought before we just inst, no. Now as I, now as I'm, now as I, as I am. Now, <clears throat> boom, 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 boom. The first thing you need to know, the first thing you need to know is what is the men, what is the manufacturer rating here? I really hope this is all making sense. I really hope this is all making sense and yeah. One other thing I want to say before, one other thing I want to say, one other thing I want to say before I start unboxing, one other thing I want to say is our instruction sheet. Now it is a flat rack front. Here's our instruction sheet. Here's our instruction sheet. Now it is a slim line two tray universal assembly instructions. Here's our instructions. Here's our instruction instruction. Wait, 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 wait. Next, 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 next accessory. I'm gonna install. Next accessory, accessory. Next, uh, next accessory. I'm gonna install. Install. All right, we'll run. All right. All right, we'll run through the cost. 